Hello everyone, the stock market has been nothing but brutal over the last two weeks. It just kept falling and falling. Some long-term investors might feel a little worried. If you are one of them, then this video is for you. In this video, I will share my thoughts on this massive sell-off that we are currently experiencing. And for curious viewers, I will also share three of my personal buy zones for stocks like Tesla, Apple, Microsoft and Google in the technical analysis segment. Alright, for viewers who have been following my videos would know that September has always been a bearish month for the stock market based on historical data. And it has proven that this year is no different as it live up to its reputation again. Just to share, September's 9.6% decline for the S&P 500 was its largest one-month percentage drop since the Covid crash in March 2020. And it's the worst September for stocks since 2008 which might have freaked out investors who only started investing in recent years. All in all, it was an eventful month with the US inflation data still hot, interest rate was raised by 75 basis points again, and Fed has been busy giving hawkish speeches. It also didn't help when central banks around the world are also raising rates to fight inflation. It's almost like the whole world is trying to bring the global economy into recession. And I think the market or bullish investors have finally realized that the entire economy is likely to slow down and there is no way they can fight the Fed, let alone the various central banks in the world. As a result, investors are pulling money out of riskier assets such as equities and the stock market tank. So looking ahead, as we enter the new month of October and the last quarter of the year, can the market still go down? Absolutely. But is it guaranteed? Definitely not because nothing is guaranteed in the stock market. But just some words of caution, that is, October will see many big US companies reporting their earnings and forecasts. As time passes by, my view is that more and more companies and investors will start to feel the negative impact of the current high inflationary environment, high interest rates, and the strong US dollar. To make things even worse, all this are happening against a backdrop of a potential global recession. All this will hurt the company's top and bottom lines, demands, profits, margins, etc, etc. Sounds really bad, right? But a quick disclaimer, by saying all this, I'm not implying that the market will definitely go down in October. Because as they always say, market is forward-looking, so who knows, maybe the market has already priced in poor earnings and forecasts from these companies or even a recession. The key message here is, if you are a short-term trader, be mindful of the high implied volatility during earnings season. And for long-term investors, be also mentally prepared for huge moves in the stock market. This is also the time for you to re-evaluate the companies you are investing in. Personally, I am not too bothered by the short-term volatility swings because firstly, by focusing only on one or two months of movements is too short-sighted for a long-term investor like me. And secondly, I'm just too busy accumulating shares at my desired buy zones. So this brings me to the next segment, the technical analysis. But before that, quick one, if you think the content of this video is useful, I hope you can help me with the like and subscribe buttons. And also leave a comment below. This will really help with the YouTube algorithm so that it can reach out to more people and will definitely keep me going. Thank you. Alright, starting things off with SPY again. I shared the following in my video titled Stock Market Meltdown, Will It Get Worse? which I will link it at the top. Okay, so what I shared was the weekly chart has a bearish engulfing candle. Then check out the green support trend line which stretches all the way through September 2020. So if the market wants to fall, we could test this support line and this means we could fall below 380. Then from this point, see if the market can rebound. If it doesn't, then we could test the low of 2022 at 360. And guess what guys, we are currently at 357 and created a new 52 week low. This is how key support level works, basically once broken, it opens a floodgate. To also add on, in my last video I also mentioned there is a potential bearish inverted cup and handle pattern spotted and this pattern is usually a powerful one and that we could really waterfall down to at least the gap at around 350 area. Currently, we are not too far from it. Alright, if at this point, my videos have helped you over the last two weeks, do hit the like and subscribe buttons, okay? Alright, still on the weekly chart, the next very crucial support is the 200 moving average at 348. Again, watch this level very carefully. If it doesn't rebound from this point, 
you can expect more panic and bloodbath in the market, and we could potentially hit towards the pre-pandemic highs of 320s range. Switching over to the daily chart, the Fibonacci level also shows us that if bulls do not reclaim 360 soon, say by next week, we could landslide to 344. So jot down these two levels, 344 for Fibonacci retracement level and 348 which is the 200 moving average. Next, there is a potential bullish divergence spotted on the RSI. So does it mean we are going to have a rally next week? Maybe? I don't have a crystal ball, but I would say the probability is higher than the last two weeks due to this massive oversold situation. Well, this is not financial advice of course. So let's say a rally really happens, watch out for the gap between 372 and 373 on the upside. Heavy resistance levels would be 380 and 387 in my opinion. Anything that's below this means the market is still bearish and I wouldn't buy calls to ride the uptrend even if there is a rally. But of course, it depends on the trading plan. You could still profit from a small bounce if you are doing scalp trading or short-term swing trades. Anyway, let's move on to individual stocks, starting with Apple. In my previous video, I mentioned to keep a lookout for 146 and 147, which is a critical support. If this gets breached, I think sub 140s could come into picture. And here we go, we are just below 140 right now. To share, I step in at 141 as this is my first buy area caught by the dip zone, which is around sub 140s. As you can see from the chart, there are quite few candlesticks from the current price point till June's low of 128. This means there are very little support. Furthermore, there is a gap between 132 to 133 waiting to be filled. Therefore, my second buy area, aka the blood on the street zone, would be around 120s range to maybe sub 130s. Lastly, my third buy area, aka coming out from retirement zone, is below $100. Interestingly, there is a gap between $94 to $99. Will it get filled? I'm not sure. I will just stick to my buying plan, simple as that. On the upside, if the market wants to bounce, let it bounce. Resistance at 146 and 152. Anything below 159 is still bearish for me as that is where the 50 and 200 moving average are right now. Okay, moving on to Tesla, I have shared on numerous occasions that there is a chance for Tesla to fall to 260s and 250s range. And here we are hitting my first buy the deep zone. Personally, I have dipped my toes into Tesla at 265. Something interesting to highlight, there is what looked like a gravestone doji candlestick form on Friday. And this is a bearish candlestick. So let's say if um, Tesla continues to fall, then I will be queuing up for more at 250s range. To also note, there is a gap between 250 to 254, and as they say, 90% of the gaps get filled. Let's see if this is the 90 or the 10% in the upcoming weeks. And in case you are curious, my next blood on the street buy zone would be around June's low, which means low 200s range. And finally, my coming out from retirement buy zone is around 180s range. To also highlight, there is a gap between 188 to 190. And as a reminder, Tesla at 190 in the pre-split world means it's below $600 and around $570 to be exact. Some time ago, I briefly shared that this is possible. Well, we shall see. On the upside, huge resistance at around $289 and $290 where the 50 and 200 moving averages are. If you had followed my videos, remember Tesla tested the 200 moving average 4 times over the last 1 or 2 months and got rejected each and every time? So yeah, you get the drift. Until Tesla can sit comfortably above the 200 moving average, my view of Tesla is still bearish. From technical point of view, of course. Fundamental wise, Tesla is still as strong as ever. Next, quick one on Microsoft. As a recap, I have stepped in for Microsoft at 240s and 250s range, which is my first buy the dip zone. My next blood on the street buy zone would be 200 to 220s range where Microsoft was consolidating from June 2020 to Jan 2021, a good 6 to 7 months. And finally, the coming up from retirement buy area will be pre-pandemic high at around 180s. To be very honest, I don't see much support from the current price point to 220s. So I think Microsoft movement will really depend on the broader market in the next coming weeks. 
If big players continue to sell off, I don't think Microsoft can stand its ground. And that's when 220's range will come into picture. On the other hand, if there is an oversold mini rally in the coming weeks leading to the earnings season, it wouldn't surprise me if Microsoft charged towards the big gap at 260 to 265, and that's 30 points upside from the current level. If you are seasoned enough to trade this uptrend, you will be rewarded quite handsomely. Watch out for 265 to 270, and this is the area where I believe sellers will start stepping in. Therefore, perhaps consider taking profits if you wish to at that level, unless we have another bear market rally similar to the one we had a few months ago. Finally, we have Google. I have bought the dip at between 100 to 105. In fact, to be very transparent, I purposely did not roll my sell put option on Friday so that I can get assigned one contract of 100 strike price. For non-option traders, if you don't understand what I have just shared, it's fine. <laughs> you just have to know that I acquired 100 shares of Google at $100. This is my first buy the dip zone, and what I am going to do with the 100 shares right now is to keep selling covered calls and milk all the premiums I can in this bear market. My next blood on the street zone would be around $79 to $90. Reason being, $90 is the next support level after $100. Then, there are gaps at the bottom between 82 and 84 as well as 79 to 80. So if 90 is bridged, I think the chance of filling these two gaps are really high. And finally, the coming out from retirement zone would be below $75. Okay, a quick wrap up. It has been a difficult year for investors. There could be some exhaustion among long-term investors as they may be wondering when will this dip end. Some could be out of cash if they had entered too early to buy the dip. In my view, so long as I have the following two things, I will not sweat over bear markets. The two things are stable stream of income and long term horizon. My game plan is to keep accumulating shares of companies that I have high conviction in and wait for the economy to recover. In fact, I think the current market presents a good opportunity to pick up shares on my watch list of fundamentally strong and good companies. And believe it or not, I feel such opportunity only appears a few times in 10 or 20 years. And to add on, if you know a bit of technical analysis, you can create your own desired buy zones or try to purchase shares at support levels, which is what I am currently doing. Well, some may say this is kind of timing the market, which I don't deny. I mean, if I know Apple has a high probability of falling from 170s to 140s, why buy it blindly at the top, right? With this being said, I will of course not do it in such a way that I am trying to pick the absolute bottom. And that is why I have 3 buy zones. So in case the market doesn't reach my last buy zone, at least I managed to pick up some shares before it embarks on its new bull run. Speaking of bull run, there is something that I have shared earlier this year and I wanna repeat again, that is, I will not expect the market to embark on a bull run to all time high until the Fed starts to pivot. So during this period, I foresee all rallies to not be sustainable. I mean, the Fed has made their intention very clear that they are not going to lower the interest rate prematurely. They need clear and concrete evidence that inflation is trending down in multiple months. And time flies, we are just 3 months away from the end of 2022. So do be mentally prepared that this whole interest rate versus inflation thingy and a weak market to last into 2023. Alright, that's all for this video. Let me know in the comments section on your investment plan in this bear market. Would love to hear them. And lastly, if you think my video value add to your research, please help to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you.